Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can actually design a 3D virtual CNC machine inside Katia using a workbench called Machine Builder. So, before we start, we actually need to have the 3D model of the machine, and we can obtain this by several methods. Uh, number one, of course, we can design the 3D machine uh, component by component by ourselves. If we, if we choose to do that, uh, we can have a very accurate machine as long as uh, we are willing to invest time and effort to do so. Uh, another method is very direct, uh, which is uh, we can always go straight to the source. Uh, like my example here, I'm referring this machine, uh, UMC 500 from Haas. So within the website, uh, within their website, we can choose from a various uh, machine types such as vertical mills, multi-exit solutions, and so on and so forth. Uh, like this example, I'm taking is five exit mills. So when we choose that option, uh, we can browse through all the models within this uh, company and see that in every machine model we can see uh, it is associated with their own 3D model in zip format so what we will get from this zip file here if we choose to download this uh, we will have a complete machine assembly in parasolid format uh, so we can use that for our uh, 3D model product uh, in this example, another method is to go to uh, another website. Uh, it is open and it's open and free to all to download. Uh, given that uh, you are logged in into this uh, website, uh, the website that I'm using is CrabCat. So I'm logging is as my user ID and search for the same machine name, uh, same machine brand, uh, UMC five hundred, and I get this result. Uh, this is. Uh, compiled by Omar El Shami, but I believe he also taken the 3D model from Haas website. As you can see here, we have this uh, parasolid format, and he has converted this parasolid format into step format. So you can see the file name is similar, except for the format. Uh, this is parasolid, and this is for step. So I choose to download this one because we already have the step file. And once we download it and save it into our folder, our working folder, uh, example for mine, I have I have this working folder here, has the MC500, and this is my step file, this is my parasolid file. Uh, I will choose this step file and import the model into my Katia. So the Katia environment I'm using right now, I can show you. The environment I'm using right now is Katia V5. Uh, 2020 actually you can use any Katia version that you have uh, this is uh, the Katia installation that I have in my system so I'm using this but for the command and function so on and so forth I think it's similar throughout Katia V5 uh, version so now I'm going to open the step file I've saved in my local drive I'm using open you can use control O as the shortcut and see this format the, the file format selection if you browse the file format available in Katia and you can see that we can open a uh, step file format so just to make sure you can uh, select the file format first see that the result is filtered by the file format selected and open the file okay I have opened this before uh, I'm not going to open it again here right now because it takes some time to load all the uh, component so I have already opened the step file and I have already uh, convert uh, the components in uh, I have converted the components from step format to cat part format which is later I compile uh, within this uh, folder called Katia model so instead of using this I'm going to open my Katia model folder let me cancel this one so I'm going to open my Katia model folder which is this one okay, you see that I have 
converted all the components as I said uh, previously it is uh, using step file uh, step format so now all of them have been converted into Katia part and the main assembly has been also converted into Katia product so I'm going to open this Katia product file which should uh, include all the children file as well I haven't done any uh, transformation or cleanup process in this one except just to convert the formatting from step to cat part and cat product. So as you can see, this is the file included in the step file. Okay, we have the enclosure, the, I think all the machine components are included in the same file. So I'm going to try to oriented orient i am i'm orienting the 3d file within this 3d space i'm using my 3d space mouse here so as you can see when we try to realign the machine uh, observe the compass here actually the vertical up direction right now given by the step file is uh, in y axis direction whereby we need to reorient this uh, assembly so that the z axis is pointing upwards okay the machine is pointing upwards in z direction so that's my objective right now okay to do that uh, there are several methods as always katia have uh, the flexibility of having several methodology to obtain a single result but right now i'm going to show you the simplest method so what you need to do now uh, you can right click on the compass and make sure that the snap automatically to selected object is selected just click on that uh, that option so you see that this tick mark is there meaning the snap automatically to selected object is active okay now while the option is active go and click on the enclosure so because this is uh, i'm taking this as the main reference for uh, transforming the orientation so once we click on this enclosure, notice that the compass is uh, snapped onto the enclosure and the compass representation color is turned from grey color. Previously, originally it's in grey color. Now it is in green color. Meaning we can uh, orient it or we can, we can arrange this enclosure according to this compass. So instead of moving manually uh, in this rotation, direction or this direction you can right click again on the compass and go to edit so in this edit uh, we have this dialog box uh, you can change the rotation increment instead of 0 dB meaning a uh, free rotation you can set it manually to 90 dB in all direction okay and see the result here if I click on this button okay the enclosure only the enclosure will get transformed according to this rotation in u u is taking and is u is taken in x axis v is in y axis and w is in z axis so once i click on this button the enclosure is rotated along this x axis actually so i'm i have okay this is the original orientation so i click on this button once Okay, and then it's still not correct because I need to make sure the uh, opening door over there is facing me. So I'm going to click on this button again. Okay, see that this is the correct orientation. Okay, so this on this is only for enclosure. We close this dialog box for now. Okay, and then right click on this compass again and disable this option okay we are going to disable this option why because we want to make sure that the position of the compass uh, will not be changed when we click on another component say this base casting notice that when i click on this base casting the compass uh, still turn into green color meaning it is active for this component but the location is not uh, changed if we uh, accidentally forgot to disable this function when we click on this base casting uh, 
this compose will snap onto the component and whatever rotation or transformation we are doing uh, later it will uh, it will get transformed or rotated according to this uh, zero zero in this compass so it's not going to align properly to our enclosure so with that said i'm going to go back to edit okay this is still the same still the same function okay just uh, before this i have clicked on this button these two button the first one i click on uh, rotate along u and then i click on this button rotate along v so we are going to follow the same sequence we click on this button first along u and then along v so notice that the position is uh, going to uh, get transformed or oriented uh, accordingly so similarly without closing this edit uh, dialog box right now we are going to click on the next component which is this x axis saddle okay notice the highlighted color uh, is um, highlighting the x saddle x axis saddle so by similar sequence i'm going to click on these two button one two okay so we just need to uh, repeat the same process for all components Okay, remember uh, our objective is to get the full assembly facing the correct orientation which is the upwards direction is in exactly this direction so just make sure the sequence is similar for all components we are going to click on the along u button first and then along v so once we done with all the components Last one here is C like this. Okay, so just close this dialog box and now just drag and drop this compass back to its place. That's it. So now when we rotate our model, we can see that the front face here, front facing is actually the front part of the machine, the right side is actually the right side of the machine, and so on and so forth. Let's see the top one. Okay, this is the top view. So there's nothing uh, running out of place. As you can see, all are in place. Because why? Because we are using the same uh, origin for transformation just now, and we are using the same sequence. So all are similar to what is supposed to be. Just to make sure, uh, you can always double check the component uh, orientation and location i'm going to hide the enclosure because we are more interested inside this component so as you can see this is the rotating table okay the component looks right the location is centered to this one and yeah everything is in place 